Hello, in this lecture we are going to study design of short columns. This lecture is divided into two parts. In the first part we are going to talk about the basics behind the design of short columns and in the second part we are going to look at an example. Starting with the basics. Now our process is simple. We want to know what kind of column we want to design. So by kind of column I mean uh, shape of the column is it a square rectangle or a circle and also the arrangement of reinforcements uh, secondly uh, the choice of material in our case we are designing a reinforced concrete column so we will be concerned with the compressive strength of the concrete and the yield strength of steel reinforcement then we are also going to talk about the slenderness of the columns, uh, trial sections, interaction diagrams to determine the reinforcement ratio, uh, general load capacity test and finally the selection of ties. I will be sharing a link of this uh, PDF in the description below so do download that. Starting on with the choice of the column type we have this interaction diagram. Now this diagram is between axial load and moment. Axial load uh, that is 5 pn and moment that is 5 mn. This is used to determine the most efficient section type for our column. If the eccentricity ratio E by H is less than about 0.1 then a spiral column is most efficient. So if our e by H, e by H value is less than 0.1 then a spiral column if our e by h value is uh, between 0.1 and 0.2 then a rectangular column with reinforcement on all faces is the most efficient and if our e by h value is greater than 0.2 then a rectangular column with reinforcement on two faces is the most efficient one this will be our first step in designing a column if the shape of the column is unknown. Next we have choice of material properties. Choice of material properties and reinforcement ratios. In normal buildings we use a compressive strength of 4000 or 4500 psi and in case of steel we are typically using grade 60 steel for reinforcements and also for the ties. Although the code allows a maximum steel ratio of 0.08 it is generally very difficult to place this amount of steel in a column and the most economical tight column sections generally involve rho g of 1 to 2 percent. In designing a column we are going to use a reinforcement ratio in the range of 1 to 2 percent. In the first step we selected the shape of the column. In the second we chose material properties like the strength of concrete and steel. Now after this we are interested in estimating the column size. This equation gives us a trial cross area of the column. We estimate the size of a column using this equation which is dependent on PU that is the applied factored load and F prime C and Fy. This rho g value will be assumed as we discussed in this line that uh, typically 1 to 2 percent is an economical uh, choice for a tight column so we will be using 1 percent or 1.5 percent so based on this assumed rho g we will get trial ag value so that will be our first trial assumption based on that trial assumption and our choice of column type we are going to calculate the dimensions of our trial section and then based on those dimensions we want to know if our column is slender or not. We can check for slenderness using this equation. After uh, selecting a trial section for our short column we want to check for slenderness. Now slenderness will actually tell us if the column is actually short or it is a slender column. The slenderness will be checked using this equation. So for the sake of this uh, example we are going to assume a k value of 1 and m1 over m2 of 0.5. Next step is the bar spacing requirement. ACI uh, requires that a clear cover, the minimum clear cover should be at least one and a half inches. So 
clear cover should be at least 1.5 inches and another requirement is that the spacing between the longitudinal bars shall not be less than the larger of 1.5 times the longitudinal bar diameter or 1.5 inches next we have spacing and construction requirement of ties the minimum tie size should be number 3 for longitudinal bars up to number 10 and if our longitudinal bars are more than number 10 then we will use a tie reinforcement uh, die of number 4 bar the vertical spacing of ties shall not exceed 16 longitudinal bar dia, 48 times the tie dia or the least dimension of the column in case of spiral, these tab will be number 3 bars and the spacing will be calculated using this equation. The load movement and shear values are given as 450, 120 and 14 kips. The column is in a braced frame and has an unsupported length of 10 feet 6 inches. For this we will select FY as 60 KSI and F'C as 4 KSI. And assume a rho g or reinforcement ratio value of 0 0.015 that is 1.5 percent putting in the values of eu f prime c fy and rho g in the formula of ag trial we get a ag trial of 2 third inch square and that corresponds to 15.2 inch here this equation tends to underestimate the column size so we are going to use an incremented value for our estimated size of column we are going to use an incremented value for the estimated size of our column so selecting a 16 inches here column we can calculate the value of eccentricity mu is 120 and pu is 450 kips that gives us a value of 3.2 inches for the eccentricity from this we will calculate our e by h value and e by h value will be used to calculate the optimum or the most efficient type of column that we discussed in this graph so in the case of this example e by h value is greater than 0.2 clear column with reinforcements on two faces is most efficient size so we are going to use this one for our e by h of 0.2 the figure 11 23 indicates that a uh, column with bars in two faces will be the most efficient. So we will use a tight column with bars on two faces. Next up we will have to check this column for the slenderness. So assuming the value of k as 1 and m1 over m2 as 0.5 we get a slenderness value k l u over r is equal to 26.3. The right side of the equation becomes 28 26.3 is less than 28 so our column is not a slender column therefore slenderness can be neglected so up, until now we have selected our trial section of 16 by 16 inches with reinforcing bars on two faces next we will calculate the value of gamma if you look at these interaction diagrams all of these interaction diagrams are for tight columns with bars on two faces. Using this, we will calculate the value of gamma. That is, gamma is equal to h minus 2 into clear cover divided by h. So, gamma value in this case is 0.69. Now, coming back to the design aids, interaction diagram corresponds to a value of 0.6. The next one corresponds to a value of 0.75. So, we will use both of these interaction diagrams and then interpolate the value between them on the y-axis we have a value of 5 pn divided by bh and on the x-axis we have a value of 5 mn divided by bh square in this design it we will put the value of 5 pn as pu and the value of 5 mn as mu b and h are known from the trial section computing the value of 5 pn over bh and 5 mn over bh square we get the first value as 1.76 and the second value as 0.35. Coming back to the design aids, we will plot the calculated values of y axis and x axis to get the enforcement ratio or rho g value. From the interaction diagram, gamma is equal to 0.6, the rho g value comes at 0 0.017. 
and from the second interaction diagram the rho g value comes as 0 0.014 now we will use linear interpolation to get the exact value of rho g for gamma is equal to 0 0.069 that comes as 0 0.015 Stereo steel will be rho g into a g. A g uh, will be coming from the trial section. So, stereo steel is 3.84 inch square in our case. In this case, we are choosing 16 inches square column with 6 number 8 bars. So far, we have a 16 by 16 inches tied column with 8 number 8 bars. Fy of 60 psi, F prime c of 4000 psi, and number three close ties at 16 inches center to center as shown in this figure this was an example of the design of short columns with tight reinforcement similarly we have an example with design of short column with spiral reinforcement the only difference between this and the tight reinforcement will be the selection of spiral spacing that will be calculated using this formula that's it for the basic design of short columns. In the next lecture, we are going to talk about the design of slender columns. I will be leaving a link of the design aids and this PDF in the description. So read through the chapter and understand the basics of designing a short column. Thank you.